You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rosnack. There are plenty of ways to celebrate 75 years of music making with the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra this weekend. An untucked dress rehearsal Friday, a marquee performance Saturday evening, followed by a 1940s canteen dance party into the wee hours of the morning. To hear more, Maestro Daniel Reiskin has joined me. Hello. Good morning, Simon. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, what a season it has been for the WSO. Hard to believe that there is just one concert left in this auspicious year of performances. It has flown by. It's true. But, you know, for me, it's also uh, uh, very strange the way things are uh, here is also that we actually do have quite a bunch of concerts in June, but that is already kind of a next season. <laughs> Though, you know, uh, naturally, it's an extension of what's happening now in May. But it has been a, a, indeed a wonderful season. And um, uh, first and foremost, because we finally were able to perform uh, in front of um, pretty well-filled halls mm -hmm. and uh, in front of the live audience uh, that was growing and uh, it was very encouraging with some great soloists, with some great repertoire, large-scale repertoire that we weren't able uh, touching on uh, during the pandemics, you know, scaling down everything just in order to present music. And I think uh, for all of us, it was a kind of a resurrection year in a way. Um, at the same time, uh, celebration, you know, looking back and looking forward. Um, this 75 is a is a is a serious mark and uh, we want to think that uh, generations after us will be proud to celebrate the 150 and 100 before that you know and this is why we work so uh, meticulously and passionately to uh, enable that and what a finisher uh, planned, uh, a concert that features one of the most iconic works in the repertoire Beethoven's Ninth Symphony his choral symphony there's always a like an added fanfare, an added excitement, almost like an aura that surrounds uh, a planned performance of, of Beethoven's Ninth, isn't there? It's true, and I think the main reason um, for this is not even the last movement with its famous choral or to joy, but that this music is, uh, this symphony is perhaps one of the most outstanding achievements um, in the history of all classical music and all music and all humanity altogether. If you you know, talking realm of arts and performing arts. Um, there's so much in this music that has never been done before and so much that had to wait so long to be somehow getting even closer to the achievement. And uh, I never will forget one uh, performance where uh, uh, in a pre-concert chat, uh, someone in the audience uh, said, Sir, can't you just play the last movement so we can get done with this and can go home? You know, but I think... Many people forget that the symphony is not just the last movement. There's another 45 minutes of absolutely sublime music before that that leads into that song of songs, into that choir of choir, into that celebration of joy that is, in my opinion, in a way also not only kind of utopia of hoping for the best, but it's also prevailing the pain. And if you think about how much Beethoven himself had to come through to arrive at this pinnacle of... Uh, um, incredible artistical powers and the summit of um, musical qualities without being able to hear a note. You will understand that uh, this is not a celebration of joy period. It's a celebration of joy through overcoming lots of hardship and pain. It is an absolute triumph, and you can't feel that triumph without that sorrow and without that struggle and without that mm -hmm. strife that comes before it. So, uh, you know, I, I think of that person. Yes, there is the famous final movement, but but there is such a journey to go on with Beethoven, oh, with the orchestra. Yeah. Uh, this is, as you say, one of those compositions that is considered to be one of the supreme works of, of human achievement. And we could talk at length about its roots in the Enlightenment and the ideals of freedom showcased in the music and the, the radical and radiant nature of a choral symphony and the sheer power of the music. But as someone who has lived with this symphony for, for a long time, has conducted it as a, as a music director, is there one thing that always strikes you uh, most about Beethoven's Ninth? You know, I think this, this moment in the last movement where he's almost frantically searches the way, the path to how it actually will evolve by quoting bits and fragments of the three movements that preceded it. This um, um, kind of uh, teared apart, um, uh, almost like bits of flesh, of bleeding wound, I would say uh, to me, as beautiful as they are, they are uh, paving the path to... Uh, this incredible melody that takes forever in the low strings, you know, it just goes and goes, and then it becomes uh, 
in, in the, the, the fundament of everything, the foundation of everything that happens after that, first through very tender and not so elaborate variations, then the variations grow and grow. And by the time this last two measures before the choir erupts, this is the moment that even just talking about it and just imagining it in my head, I, I have goosebumps yeah. because this is this is about one of the most glorious uh, moments in, in musical history one can imagine. It just takes altogether four beats, you know, four heartbeats to lead into that incredible eruption of, uh, of joy and trust that at the end everything will come together and all be good. Well, Winnipeg audience is keen to hear this uh, magnificent work. Uh, tickets to the Saturday concert sold out ages ago, it, it seems now. But thankfully, there's been an untuxed uh, dress rehearsal that has been open to the public on Friday. Can, can audiences expect to hear a, a full run through of the symphony with, oh, yeah. with we, soloists in the CMU Festival Chorus? We and? are going to do a full run, but people need to understand that since it's not a you know full performance uh, uh, and it's untuxed, not only in terms of you know dress code, but also perhaps the the main effort and uh, the 150 percent of vocal devotion would be reserved for the evening performance the day after that you can't sing and perform and live through the music <clears throat> of that magnitude of emotions and and uh, uh you know current power uh twice within 24 hours of, of 36 hours so it will be still work in process but we are going to play it in full and on the other hand i can tell you we are all musicians uh, to such an extent that it you cannot be just objective playing music like this with reservation so we are going to be drawn uh, into it with all our hearts and guts and we're going to play our hearts on sleeve but maybe the most magical moment will be still left for the evening after also because it maybe will be the very first time in my five seasons here where we will have all 2400 seats of that concert hall field completely Absolutely, uh, and packed. that's a, that's a great knowledge, and uh, it's a great source of inspiration. <laughs> Let's hope this is something that will happen more and more and more and more on a regular basis. Uh, so, for those who will be in those two thousand four hundred seats on on Saturday, in addition to Beethoven's Night, the WSO welcomes back one of Canada's biggest stars in the classical music world, uh, Jan Leschetsky. Um, you must be so excited about well, this. It what doesn't a coup. welcome him back. He, the, he is back in Winnipeg, but it's the first time he's actually playing with WSO. Well, I was trying to think because he was here last in 2017, but that was with the National Arts Center Orchestra. And then he also played after that, or he played with the Manitoba Chamber. Right. right. I was going to say, is this the first time? He's wow. going to give his uh, absolute uh, WSO debut with one of the pieces that are the most core of his repertoire, E minor concerto by Chopin, that I happen to play with him uh, a number of times. And I remember Jan, you know, it's a wonderful friendship, and he's grown into this incredible world star, very mature musician, but still being <coughs> remembered by me as a 17-year-old boy who would be throwing the pencils into me, uh, into myself in my uh, music director room uh, in uh, Poland after the concert, being 16 or 17-year kid, you know, just as playful <laughs> as he was then. Uh, but I think that th I couldn't imagine a better pair yeah. Uh, for uh, Beethoven Ninth, um, uh, then um, Chopin's concerto, which is also filled with this incredible energy of the 18-year-old who uh, is filled with the romance, but also with passion and with whole life in front of him uh, still being there. And this is, for me, in a way, symbolic because I th still think that there's a whole lot of life in front of the WSO to conquer and to fill in with absolutely remarkable pages of its history. And, um, uh, you know, also Jan is uh, of a Polish origin, but he's Canadian. I just mm -hmm. was flying through Calgary yesterday. Yes, also hometown. Kind of sim symbolic that I arrived in Winnipeg from Calgary, and this is where Jan will be coming to Winnipeg as well. So I think it's going to be a feast of feasts, and uh, I'm incredibly grateful to be part of it, you know, to be part of this uh, wonderful history. 
Um, so yes, what what a night it will be on Saturday. If you're just tuning in, I'm chatting with Maestro Daniel Reiskin, who leads the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra in, uh, well, a whole weekend of festivity planned to conclude this 75th anniversary season. We just heard acclaimed pianist Jan Leschetsky making his WSO debut. Uh, you get to reunite with him, but uh, the first time he's performing alongside the WSO, the uh, Chopin Piano Concerto Number no. 1 in E minor, he, one of the great interpreters of Chopin's music, plus Beethoven's Ninth. And as if that wasn't enough, Maestro, there is more planned for Saturday evening. Well, the party is a party. There's an after party. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a bit about this? Or you, is it something you're well, looking forward to too? As as you know, and everyone knows, the first concerts uh, by WSO under the direction of Walter Kaufman were in 1948. So the idea is uh, to throw a kind of a canteen style dance party of the 1940s. Um, on different locations and levels in Centennial Concert Hall, there will be a DJ, there will be a brass ba- dancing band, there will be lots of snacks and uh, and drinks and cocktail stations, and I guess um, the um, soloists for the evening will join us as well uh, after a very elevating performance and, uh, you know, to celebrate um, the history of the orchestra that they just performed with. I'll be there myself. Everyone is encouraged to come dressed in styles of 1940s uh, Whatever that means and whatever you <laughs> feel like, uh, but it's definitely not an obligation. Um, I think that the, the the tickets are still available. They are. Uh, they are not expensive, and you might even get a whatever tax break, uh, uh, charitable tax receipt for that. Um, part of it and um, well the more people uh, show up uh, for a celebration and party like this the more fun it's going to be so if you can't make it to the concert at least make it to the party yeah the party begins at uh, 10 p.m. tickets are $75 to the WSO after party you also get a $50 tax receipt with that purchase um, so I mean it goes a very very long way an evening mm-hmm. of dancing of celebration a 1940s canteen style party with the Dirty Catfish Brass Band DJ Honeycutt's going to be there it's just going to be a, a wonderful way to cap off 75 years, isn't it? Absolutely. And to, and, you know, and to uh, um, mark a beginning of the new era. I, I mean, I, I always say, you know what, at my age, I still can hope uh, being there when uh, WSO is going to be celebrating the 100th anniversary. You too. And, yeah. you know, who, if I behave well, then I might be asked to uh, at least attend the party or maybe being part of a performance of sorts, you know, and then we can chat 25 years from now, many more times before that, <laughs> about the 100th anniversary of the uh, symphony. And I'll be surprised if when WSO turns 100, it's not going to be Beethoven 9th that will be played. It is just one of those works. And I mean, before that 100th, we get to hear Beethoven's 9th as part of this, the 75th anniversary season. Uh, what a work, Maestro. As always, wonderful to see you. Thank you so much. We're going to end this conversation um, sort of in similar fashion to how we began it with Jan Leschetsky. Uh, this, not the uh, Chopin Piano Concerto that he'll be performing on Saturday. Saturday. Instead, the piano concerto number two in F minor, the final movement here, uh, Jan Leschetsky with the Sinfonia Varsovia.